In my recent video about the Lost Nightmare on Elm Street game for NES, there is one possibility that I neglected to mention. And when I received an email from a viewer who had personally investigated this story for years, it seems like it might be the most likely explanation. The explanation being that perhaps the prototype didn't actually exist, and the screenshots we saw were simply mock-up images. So for this video, let's take another look at these screenshots. But if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I suggest you watch my other video on this topic first. If you don't feel like it, here's a super fast summary of it. So for a period of time in the late 80s, LJN was promoting a Nightmare on Elm Street game in posters alongside its other games, and it also had articles written about it in Nintendo Power. This was a game where you played as Freddy Krueger and you had to kill the Elm Street kids. This wound up being completely different from the Nightmare on Elm Street game that actually came out in 1990, implying the existence of a prototype that we've yet to actually get our hands on. And that brings us to now. Before we get into it though, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Honey. These days it seems like all the shopping we do is done online. And here's where today's sponsor, Honey, comes in. It's a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and tests them out when you're checking out. Here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. When you're checking out on one of its 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds, and if Honey finds a code, you'll watch the prices drop. Those of you who've already installed Honey using my link have found over $27,000 in savings. It's simple, if you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free and it works with whatever browser you use. Get Honey for free today by going to joinhoney.com slash wang. That's joinhoney.com slash wang so they know I sent you. And once again, thank you to Honey for sponsoring this video. So on January 21st, I received an email from a person who had just watched my video about the Lost Nightmare on Elm Street game. His name was Armageddon Potato, and what Armageddon Potato does is he helps document NES prototypes for the cutting room floor. If you don't know the cutting room floor, it's basically the website to look at old prototypes of video games as well as stuff that's buried in the code of retail releases. In his first email, he tells me that it's a popular school of thought that the images seen in magazines and the posters were actually just mock-up images. And he thinks that the only screenshot from this prototype that has a chance of being real is the title screen. He mentioned that LJN throughout its history had had a lot of issues with games that were butchered between the early versions and the release. A lot of this came from issues with higher-ups in the company and sometimes even Nintendo themselves. The example he used to illustrate this was Beetlejuice. He sent me a variety of screenshots comparing the prototype versions to the release versions, and the thing about this is, it is a little different from the Freddy situation. In the Beetlejuice screenshots he sent me, it's very obviously the same game that has had some change made to it, and not a completely different game. At that point, I wasn't really sold, so I asked him if he had any specific evidence for the Nightmare on Elm Street game. And as it turns out, he did, and it's actually pretty convincing. He talks about how a lot of his knowledge of NES prototypes comes from websites he used to browse, like Play the NES, Nintendo Player, and Nintendo Age. Discussions about different NES prototypes have come up a lot on these sites' forums. And Freddy was always a hot topic. There was always a lot of debate over whether these images were of a game that had actually been developed, or if these were merely concept images for a game in its ideation phase. And a lot of the community members who were more knowledgeable with how the NES actually works noticed a lot of damning inconsistencies in these screenshots. First, let's take a look at what's the least strong piece of evidence here, the prototype title screen. Although there doesn't really seem to be anything amiss with the artwork, there's an issue with a white speck that appears in this image. This isn't an artifact from scanning the magazine, as it appears in multiple different scans of it. Still, there exists the possibility that this is some kind of error with how the magazine was printed or something like that, but a lot of people think that this is the cursor from an art program. And adding to the cursor theory is that a similar white speck appears in other images. Next, let's take a look at the three screenshots from the standalone Freddy Krueger poster. What's interesting here is that you have two kids. One facing one way, one facing the other. And this guy's saying, what do you want from me? And they're both in the same frame of their walk cycle. NES games, unless there's something specific to the character that's different on each side of their body, will typically just flip the sprite depending on which way they're facing. Yet if you take one kid and compare him to the other, they don't match up. 
One kid is ever so slightly fatter, and also one kid is also centered on the floor a little bit higher. It could be some kind of weird distortion in the image, but that seems doubtful to me, especially since the top of Freddy's body in both images matches up. And there's no way in hell they would have went to draw two different versions of the kids for facing right and facing left. And something else he pointed out that's not really connected to the debunking, it's just an interesting thing. If you look closely, the Freddy snake is coming out of a sink faucet, implying that the pipes you see in the overworld map are the sewer system, and that's how you got around the map and into these houses. Finally, let's take a look at what's to me the most damning piece of evidence here, the overworld map. Now, NES games have a very limited amount of space for art. This causes them to do everything they possibly can to save room by reusing sprites. Sometimes even in unexpected ways, like probably the most classic example of this, the clouds in Super Mario are just the bushes recolored. Not only does this prototype image not take steps to make the graphics more economical, it seems to go out of its way to make it as wasteful as possible. For example, there's the case of the bottom floor windows. Not only are they shaded differently from each other with one having a broader line on the side, but they also have lights underneath them that are centered differently from each other. Now, all artwork in an NES game fits on a grid of squares. I can envision a scenario where maybe the way the houses were placed made them off the grid so they would have to make a separate sprite for it, but it would have been so much easier for them to simply make the houses fit inside the grid so they could reuse the same assets. Rather than redraw every single window for some reason and make them slightly different from each other. And after that, to me, the absolute smoking gun in this particular screenshot is the ground. Look at how the ground is speckled because, you know, that's how you make dirt look dirty. Normally, you'd see some kind of a pattern that would repeat over and over again so you're not wasting a bunch of tiles on specks on the ground. For example, let's take a look at the fence the grass, and the dirt in Friday the 13th, another LJN game. Look how you can see the patterns repeating. Compare this to the Freddy overworld, and you can see that these specks are all over the place. Although some parts of the ground do look like they repeat, there's so many different variations in the spacing that it would take so many different tiles to actually make this. It's as if it was made with a spray can tool in a graphics program. To me, that seals the deal that these were mock-ups and not images of a game playing on actual NES hardware. That being said, even if these are mock-up screenshots, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is no prototype. But if the prototype does exist, there's a chance that it looks completely different from this. Maybe the inside was finished and the overworld wasn't. Maybe the screenshots inside are from different stages of development. Maybe they were just using this to pitch the game to Nintendo who turned it down. Although, to me, it seems strange that the game would be in that phase, and then they would still spend money on advertisements and promotional material. But sometimes in that business, you just get taken off guard. You can never know for sure. And Armageddon Potato noted something else that's important. In the world of collecting rare video game prototypes, there's kind of this war going on between the people who want to get these unseen games and bring them to the public, and the investors who just want to have these games all to themselves. There's been cases where a community would pool its money together to retrieve one of these unseen prototypes just to be outbid by a single wealthy investor. If this prototype were to exist, and it were ever to get to an auction, there's a chance that someone like that has it sitting all to themselves in their collection. But there you go, some evidence that this thing might not actually exist after all. Let me know what you think. Once again, thank you to Armageddon Potato for helping me with this information, and if you like this video, check out my video about the cancelled 3D Chrono Trigger fan remake. I'm out.